Yes, I am. Um, I'm on the northern beaches in my family home. I've been back here since COVID started, so this is my room. My little, do you like my little hands? You can see half of them. <laughs> <laughs> you've done or? no so um it's a beautiful i think she's from western australia artist and she does these beautiful lined drawings and then you can get them as like vinyl prints so basically you just transfer it onto your wall i would like to say i did that but she definitely gets all the credit <laughs> and is it there's a hand above it as well yeah it's right. kind of like doing this ah very <laughs> Sorry, all in the hands oh. do that right now <laughs> Sorry, that was Siri. Get out of here, Siri. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so Siri, before we start, um, I wanted to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of country and and see and community. And we pay our respect to elders past and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. So you have had a pretty big 18 months when you think about it, when you think three EPs out, which are obviously running with the wolves, crazy with the light, and now your latest, Ladder to the Moon, which is just out. Um, and one of the songs on Ladder to the Moon, uh, Some Kind of Love, is already, that has already been the most played song, J, which is awesome. Congratulations. And actually, there's an older song of yours, which also had that accolade, which was Dizzy, of uh, the Running with yeah. And I really want to talk to you about Ladder to the Moon, but I'd actually love to start by talking about Dizzy because not only was it uh, the number one song played on Triple J, it was also a runner up in the 2020 Vander and Young songwriting competition. And Jackster is very proud to be a supporter of that competition. Um, and this is actually for anyone watching this know about the Vander and Young Global Songwriting competition. This is the last week that you can enter up until uh, I think 11.59 p.m. on Thursday. Um, it's open to all songwriters around the world, whether you're published or unpublished. There is up to $80,000 in prize money up for grabs. So literally, life songwriter. <laughs> and go to Not Off Robin Australia, which is an incredible organization, which uses therapy to uh, improve the lives of children and adults who are going through emotional or social difficulties or psychological or cognitive dif difficulties. So a really great cause as well. And uh, if you want to, just go to the apraamcost.com site and you can do so. So let's talk about Dizzy, the song that yes. uh, you wrote with Chris Collins. Um, what do you What do you remember of writing that song? Well, I it was in between. I'd come back to Australia and I was only meant to be there for a few weeks because I was trying to get a visa to go back to London and write and those few weeks turned into three months, which at the time definitely was not ideal, but I'm so grateful it happened because at the end of the day, Dizzy wouldn't have existed if that didn't happen. So yeah, we were, I like went into work with Chris and we were both going through some things, some up and down emotions. And I really wanted this song to reflect that. And I just had this kind of feeling of like dizziness and like a dizzy heart because I think that that is what life is. You know, you are feeling high one minute, but maybe the next you're not. And I think it's about being okay with having a dizzy heart and accepting and embracing all those sides of ourselves and showing up no matter what what side you kind of get on any particular day. Um, so I, yeah, I really wanted the song, not only lyrically, but in the melody and, and the production to kind of reflect that highs and those lows that we like all inevitably feel, but I hope can embrace. And so that's what Dizzy was for me. And at the time it meant so much to write. And even to this day, I'm so grateful that that was my first single. It almost wasn't gonna be the first single. Um, it was actually originally meant to be Wolves, but I'm really glad it we kind of did a flip and it worked out that way because um, I think at the time the world <laughs> needed it as much as I did. And um, yeah, so it was a super special time with me and Chris. Yeah. So what was the, so why, what was the reason it became the first single when Wolves So it became the first single because um, 
wolves basically what you hear of wolves is practically the demo we didn't right. do anything to it and originally my team was kind of trying to produce or oh, no they weren't trying to but we were trying to see what it would be like to be produced in all these different ways and I just wasn't connected to that and they really wanted obviously that first single to be like more up and and better, like bigger production but I just couldn't wolves to me needed to stay in its soul form that it did and I'm really glad because in having Dizzy come up like this it allowed wolves to be shared as it is and again that song is so special to me as well so Dizzy was kind of um to be honest it wasn't even in like the initial discussions of being on it um but I was having a chat with my manager when I was in London after we were after I was going back and forth on Wolves and he was like oh like what about Dizzy and it was just like that light bulb moment I'm like oh my god why is this not the first single so yeah it kind of happened almost accidentally I guess but I you know accidentally also the universe did that so it probably wasn't an accident <laughs> um, but yeah it definitely all worked out how I um really hoped it would so yeah what did it be at that point because you'd had quite a journey right uh, I think after you left school you went to Berkeley for a little while and didn't quite find what you were hoping came back to Australia landed in Sydney and then decided to go to Byron Bay and the studio and record and again didn't quite come out what you'd hoped to but then you found your manager and your manager found you and then all of a sudden you were traveling the world going to writing sessions like Isabella Summers from Florence and the Machine. Yes. Up that whole period leading up to the release of, of Disney first EP. It was what it was a dizzy time. Like <laughs> it was <laughs> that that whole journey is definitely what led me to the song as well. Like as you said, it was I had been trying for quite a while to you know, I've, I've written my whole life. I have such a love and adoration for words and how many different beautiful ways you can say one thing and so I was always writing down things singing melodies into my phone but in terms of like putting music to it I, I never could quite do that and so I always needed the help for that so as as you said I went up to Byron that initial time and it really did not work out as planned and then by chance, Tim found me and he literally had me in my first writing session the next morning. Like he, wow. he, messaged, me, yeah, he messaged me at six in the morning the next day. He's like, do you want to go <laughs> to your first writing session? And I was like, okay, yes, I'll do that. And of course, like I hadn't done co-writing before. I hadn't been in a writing session. So I was like, I didn't know what to bring. So I just had my songwriting book. And it was obviously this completely foreign experience that I hadn't had before, but it was such a beautiful first session and um, I was really proud of the first kind of little song I wrote. And then, yeah, from there, I spent a couple months in Sydney writing with a few people. That's when I initially met, met Chris um, mm -hmm. Collins and Dylan Nash, who have been really massive, a big part of all my things that I've released so far. Um, and then went straight to London and LA, and Nashville. <laughs> so kind of went jumping around in that process of, I like to say that um, sessions, especially when you're in that kind of back-to-back, day-to-day meeting, it's like s extreme speed dating. Because, right. <laughs> and I like literally said until this point, I was like, I haven't been on this many dates in my life until this, <laughs> until this point. <laughs> because it, it really does feel like that. Because, you know, it's like you meet someone, it's like, hi, how are you? Now, like, tell me your deepest, darkest secret. And... You know, it's a pretty, it's obviously like a vulnerable and like vulnerable experience. But when you're in those sessions and it just clicks, it's the most beautiful thing. And I think also when you're in the ones where it doesn't, um, it's definitely a learning curve to realize that that's also okay. And that every single session doesn't have to be amazing, nor does every experience. Because at the end of the day, it's going to teach you something. It's going to teach you what you don't like, what you don't need or teach you how to grow. So um, it was definitely a very roller coaster journey up until I released Dizzy, but I'm so grateful to have had all of it happen. <laughs> Can you hear the growth when you think of 
busy. Uh, and now you think about Lady of the Moon. And I realized maybe even all of the songs on Lady of the Moon were written quite a while ago. Can you still hear a, a growth, a growth that you just spoke of? Can you hear the difference between these? Completely. I mean, those majority of those songs were actually written in that um, period between, so almost three years ago now. Um, but I really believe that in delving back into these songs, they have, there's been like such a wider meaning within me with them, if that makes sense, because I feel like when I initially wrote them, I was going through these things that I still wasn't ready to face. And it almost became like a, a, a subconscious, like I was writing them to my future self. And at the time, I obviously didn't realize that. And then, yeah, coming back to them and in, you know, doing the production and, and really um, sitting with them again, especially during this time, they have become so important to me and I feel like I've grown, even though I wrote them such a long time ago, I've grown so much in like coming back to them and seeing how I sit with them now. It's, it was a pretty special experience um, to kind of be like, at this point, a lot more confident in who I am and embracing and accepting all those emotions and things I was feeling and not fearing that if I showed people them that people would, you know, not, reciprocate or would not think I was worthy enough or things like that. So I'm definitely at a place now where I was ready to share these things and, and hoping that by doing that, that that would help other people feel those same things about themselves. Right. What's it like to go back and I guess read the song several years ago and to actually realize the meaning of it, to, to sort of see saying at that time, you had realized that you were writing Self, as your future self now, and you think, <laughs> that, do, you, do you have a light bulb moment and go, ah, oh, that's what I meant? Yeah, like I honestly, and that's the funny thing is like, I actually feel like I've definitely discovered the meaning more than mm. that initial period. And yeah, whether I said it was subconscious that my, myself was always like, you're going to get this soon. <laughs> just you wait, you'll, you'll be there. Um, or yeah, or, or I just, I guess, as I am now, I am reflecting upon them. That's just like, I'm coming at them from a different awareness as well. Um, but I think that's such a cool thing. It's like, and I, and you know, that's also a testament to hopefully the kind of music I want to write is music that it has got that, I guess, timelessness. That's all the music, all the classic music I look up to, no matter where, how old it is or how many times you listen to it, every time you come to it, it, you just get it and it means something so strongly to you. It could mean something different in different moments, but it will always carry carry that. Um, they'll never kind of be in irrelevance, I guess. Sure. Are there songs for you of other people that are like that classic, <sighs> classic song? Yeah. <laughs> well, my favourite songs, my top three favourite songs, uh, <laughs> It's very hard, <laughs> but oh gosh, now I'm like, oh, well, three of my favorite songs, <laughs> uh, Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen and um, Resolution by Matt Corby. Okay. Those are, yeah, those are some songs to me that like every time I come back to them, Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen, that's one of the songs that I will never forget on guitar and every time I play it, I just feel it so strongly it's such a feeling song it's so raw and all there for you to kind of just absorb <laughs> um so yeah what those three songs have you think is there a common the three of them yeah i think it's the again the storytelling i think the songwriting you know as i said for me like words songwriting and like the voice are the most important part of a song to me mm -hmm. and i you know, I feel with those songs that you can feel the story. There's a relatability. And I think that's also something that's super important in songwriting is I, you know, you want to write things and you want to be as open as possible so that people know that if they're feeling the same thing, that that's okay. And I think it's also beautiful when those stories, you know, someone doesn't have to be going through the exact same experience, but it could be describing a certain emotion 
and then that relates to that person. I think all those songs hold that. They either, even if it's not the exact meaning behind the, the lyric, it, it still makes you feel that certain thing and takes you to that certain place. And yeah, I think just incredible songwriting does that. So I think they're all incredible artists. <laughs> had fans some of your songs touching them in that way what was that sorry have you ever had um your fans reach out to some of your songs that have touched them in that way yeah it's i honestly it's still like the most shocking thing to have messages like that and every single one means so much to me because that's all i want if i can if it's even if it's one person or you know a thousand people every one person counts and just to have those messages of people feeling like something i've said to them has really helped them do something or they've connected it in that way like i really hope to be a voice for people that i didn't necessarily don't know if i had myself growing up i want to be that for other people and and kind of create a space in a community where people can feel open enough to just share things like it's so cool when you know I think I share myself and then they feel comfortable to share themselves back like that's all you yeah. want I think that's all we should be as humans but everyone's so fearful of exposing their chests right. per se. <laughs> that um that yeah that it's it's not seen as normal or whatever normal is but I think we should be celebrating that and we should be doing that more because yeah it's the bravest thing we can do yeah it's one of the great things about songwriting change between yeah. the audience completely one of the uh well I mean the the EP is called Ladder to the Moon and um the moon is like it's it's an important uh symbol for you you know you, you reference it in other words of the song Wolves, of Running With The Wolves, you sing that moon between your fingers. What is, what is the significance of the moon to you? I see the moon as a beautiful reflection of life. I think it has such a power over not only us, but the rest of nature of ocean, like whether we acknowledge it or not. I think it's such a beautiful thing to look up to because, you know, we see it in all its phases and anytime anyone's looking at the moon, they're looking up and even at any phase, any stage, you're like, wow, that's beautiful. But I found this disconnect of like, why don't we see that within ourselves? Every phase we go through, because we're never constantly whole. Like there's always, you know, it's, it's a circle of life basically. And you're in one stage at one time, but we struggle to embrace those things, whereas the moon is just so, you know, beautiful and glowing and embracing of, of, its, of all its sides. And I also, you know, I see the moon as like reaching for those dreams. I guess that's like why I wrote kind of Light to the Moon as well as like, it's also symbolizing, you know, reaching for something that you almost think is out of reach but in reality like we have such a power over our minds and what is actually possible um so i think yeah the moon is just uh it's such a strong and powerful thing in all of our lives and yeah i think that I don't know, I'm just so drawn to it, like everyone else is. I'm like, I'm like I just love the moon. <laughs> I, I really do. Anything, like, yeah, up in the sky, it's like a, it's a dreamland and it's also a possible land. It's not just, yeah, it's not just meant for dreaming. It's meant for reality and, and to live by. And like anything in nature as well, it's not just the moon. It's like we have so much, if we actually looked at nature, if we actually watched it and how it, like, coexist with each other and like embraces all its sides if we did that as humans like i feel like we'd be living far more beautiful lives um mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's just yeah that reflection of what it what it is yeah to and that that idea of nature out there and that's always been really important as a kid that it was almost um a refuge to, to be living close to nature and to be 
has it always just had that that pull for you completely i yeah i'm not shy in saying that it was my best friend growing up like i definitely have always looked to it and it's it's something that has always supported us no matter if we've supported it like it's always there for us even <laughs> i go on like my my runs on my walks and there's this one tree i can't go past without hugging it <laughs> it's like my hugging tree and i thank it and i, like, I do all those things but um yeah again it's just like we are a part of nature as well we come from nature the only reason we exist is because of nature so it doesn't make sense as to why we wouldn't like embrace it and love it and look at it um not just like externally but within ourselves as well yeah the ep finishes with a beautiful song um i guess a, a piano driven song called wildlife live in the wolf cabin which i understand you worked on with british songwriter called Ed Harcourt, who I'm huge. What was it like working with Ed on that song? He is incredible. We had a two-day session and his place is just outside of London. Um, and he had, it's actually, he's called it the Wolf's Cabin. And it's it was so synchronistic to me because I'm also obviously very, wolves are my spirit animal. Basically, I've got my little wolf. I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> um, but on his wall, there's like a neon um, wolf wolf head as well. Um, so I feel like we were very on the the wolf, <laughs> the same the same page there. Um, but he, yeah, it's just an incredible and interesting human. And I think in the time of writing it, I think we were both in certain places. I think he was going through some darker things which in turn kind of pulled those things out of me so it was a very it was a very like intense time but the most like magical thing came out of it and I'm so grateful for that um yeah so he's he's an awesome human <laughs> and it's quite a different song compared to the other three songs on there and I think uh, one of my colleagues Jenny did an interview for Jackster, a um, wonderful interview, and you spoke with her about the fact that you weren't even that sure if you'd sort of got a song by the end of it, and you weren't sure of the performance. Was it was it a very raw song to actually try and commit to? Uh, I wasn't commit to tape, but to commit to whatever you use. Completely. Firstly, Jenny is an absolutely beautiful human being. I must say, you guys I... are very lucky to have her. <laughs> um, and yeah, this was definitely the song. It's really interesting because I feel like it's become the song that's the most special to me on the EP because what it stands for, but it was also the one I completely feared the most. As I said, that time was super intense. I literally, what you hear is what was recorded in like the last half an hour. We were, he, Ed was working on some production stuff and it just wasn't working. So I was like, okay. I don't want to leave with nothing. So can you get on the piano? I'll just sing this one take, let's do it. And suddenly it just clicked. And it was like, that is it. So we're like in the moment of this, but of course everything building around that, the energy and everything that we were feeling, that is what is in that take. My voice is not perfect. I was exhausted. It was cracking. I was, you know, in all sorts of states. And so I guess in leaving, I really felt like, I felt defeated and I felt like I hadn't done well and I was on the train back to London and my A&R um, called me and I was I was ready to be like oh god this is I'm so sorry I, I did so terribly and he's like what are you talking about like this was incredible like there's such a magic in this but I was like but I sound terrible I was just so like in my head on it I was like scared of people seeing that and so honestly up until we locked in these songs for the EP, I was fighting it. I was like, okay, if I'm going to have this on the EP, you guys need to let me like redo it. I need to have control. I need to do it in a setting where I know I have control over my voice. I can do this exactly how I want to do it. And I did that. And those were beautiful, beautiful takes, but it lost its magic. It lost its raw energy. And I think it lost the depth of it because everything that that song is about is in that recording and 
I also realized that I was think I was trying to clean up this mess that I don't think actually needed to be cleaned up. If anything, I think people needed to see that because it's so easy nowadays to filter everything. And as you can see, like, you know, my the other three songs on the EP, they're produced, they're all controlled in a sense, you know? Whereas this one, I was like, it can't be that. I need to do this not only for myself, but for everyone listening to me, because the big thing that's, you know, strung along across everything I've released, everything I say is about giving as much love to the dark as you do the light. And if I don't release this song as it is, then I'm not doing that. So it was, yeah, it was a big kind of scary realization, but once I kind of let go of that fear, it was actually like such a weight off my shoulders. Cause I was like, you know, even if this song isn't polished, there's still going to be people that either like it or they don't. So it doesn't, doesn't matter in context of that. What matters is me just sharing everything authentically from myself and hoping that that reaches the hearts of the people listening. And yeah, so that's all I have control over. And so I, yeah, chose to release it as it is, which my team was very happy about. <laughs> so like, we told you so. <laughs> beautiful song and such a great way to finish it but I'm glad that you uh <laughs> that you released that version Thank you. When, when you think about some of the things you've learned about songwriting um over the past couple of years and anyone's watching this who's thinking of putting a song in for the Vander and Young song edition if there were a couple of real things you've learned about songwriting um what do you think they would be I think one of the biggest things and something I definitely learned from being in that, I guess, roller coaster of these back to back sessions is that no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been around, how amazing an artist you are, you are always going to have bad days. <laughs> that you're not like the expectation I think we put on ourselves is so drastic, as not only as songwriters, but as humans in general, to to be doing our best all the time and seeing failures as failures when really failures bring you the greatest things. Um, so I think, yeah, in general, just going into every session as open as you can and trying to take the pressure off yourself and just focus on being present in that moment and hopefully connecting with that person that you're with, because it also might happen that you might not get the song in that session, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get it in the next. Mm. It, there's like, there's no, I think there's actually no failures because it always leads to something else. Um, and I think the other thing is just like, for me as, as a songwriter, I struggle to write something that isn't connected to me that I haven't experienced. So I think, if you can write things that are, you know, if you can be as vulnerable as possible and write things that truly come from your heart, then that's all that matters. Then you know that anything you're saying isn't, you know, isn't something that you're going to not love because you've experienced it. And, um, yeah, so I think it's, yeah, it's such a special thing to to do and to be able to express through that way. So just being kind to yourself, I think, in the process and knowing that things come at you at the most random times as well. It may not be in that actual room. <laughs> it's I think all songwriters know that you get things at like the randomest times and you quickly write them down or whatever, but it's from living. That's the other thing. You, like go out and live and there's your songs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very great advice. Azuri, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, it's great to talk to you. Um, reminder, let it out right now. So dream it if you haven't heard it. Full EP. Um, if you're a songwriter, don't forget, enter the, globe, uh, the Vander and Young Global Songwriting Competition. Entries close this Thursday at 11.59. Music credits, head to jack.com, um, which is the world's biggest resource of official music credits. Um, and we are dedicated to everyone who creates music credit where credit is due. So thank you.
Thanks so much again, Azuri. It's great. Thank you so much, Rod. I'm really grateful to be able to have a beautiful chat with you, all of you at Jackster. are so sweet and just so passionate about music. So it's beautiful to have discussions like that with humans. And yeah, Jackster's amazing as well. When I found, when I first went on Jackster, because I was looking up, I was really interested in seeing who was behind all the songs. I was like, wow, it's all there. <laughs> And that's great. Yes. So glad that you've used it. And uh, obviously, Azuri, your career out there, as are everyone who's worked on your music. Um, and all sorts of cool stuff with them. So um, thank you once again, Azuri. Love it. And hopefully, we'll see you in person soon. Hopefully. Thank you so much. Good luck to everyone in Jaxta. Oh, not Jaxta. In the um, <laughs> Van Der <Do> Young competition. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Azuri. See you. Bye. Bye.